In this video we're going to look at discrete random variables um, using a cumulative distribution table. So first of all here I've just got a probability distribution table. Um, it, I've got here a set of outcomes x and I've got the probability of obtaining each of those outcomes. Um, and I'm just going to add in here a, an extra row which is going to be the cumulative um, distribution which we usually use a capital F for that. So this first box is going to represent um, obtaining anything that is 2 or lower, so that's 1 16th. The next one is anything 3 or lower, so that's the 2 16th plus the 1 16th. And as I go along, I can uh, complete this distribution. I'm just going to leave it all in terms of 16th for the moment, although I could simplify some of these fractions. Um, so by the end, by the time I've got up to x is equal to 8, that covers all 16 outcomes are 8 or lower. So how can I then um, evaluate various things from this? Well, to find the value of f4, well, I can simply look up where f, uh, x is 4 in my cumulative distribution column, and I can see that that's 6 sixteenths. And again, I could simplify that fraction if I wanted to. Well, the next one here, so we've got evaluate f of 5.2. So this is looking at uh, discrete random variables. So a value of 5.2 can't actually exist because um, it's not a discrete value. We're, we're going to be looking at um, F5. And anything from F5 all the way up to um, F5.9 is all still going to be 5 because we haven't got as far as 6 here. So I can look that up in the relevant column and I get 10 sixteenths. So two more to look at. Now this time this is written as a probability. So evaluate the probability that x is greater than 6. So it cannot be equal to 6, it must be greater. So I'm only looking at the 7 and the 8. Now I can do this um, by thinking, well, what is the probability that x is 6 or lower? So what is f6? Well, f6 is 13 sixteenths. Uh, so what's missing for that? Well, 3 sixteenths, so that must be the probability I want here. So that's one way of looking at it. Alternatively, what I could do is I could just look at the, um, the probability distribution row here and I could just say, well, look, it's these two I'm interested in, so I can just add 2 sixteenths and 1 sixteenth. So this final one, um, so the probability that here that x lies between 2 um, and 5 and here it can include 5 as well, here it can't. So basically I'm looking at 3 4 and 5. So again, I can take a similar approach to here. I can um, think, well, that's going to be, um, I could think of it as, well, f5 subtract f2, which is everything up to and including 5, subtract everything up to including 2, which just leaves me uh, the values of 3, 4 and 5. So if I was to do that, I would then have uh, 10 sixteenths subtract uh, 1 sixteenth and that would then give me an answer of 9 sixteenths, which is fine. Alternatively, I could just look at the values that were 3, 4, and 5. So 3, 4, and 5 here, and I could just add these three fractions and get my 9 sixteenths that way.